What you were about to witness is real. Test, test. There we go. There we go. Uh, the mic was working while we were on standby. And, now it's, and, then, and then it wasn't. Yay. You love to see it. Yay. So there we go. There we go. We're good. We're good. We sounded good. No audio issues like last stream. So, oh, yeah. It sounds good. Okay. Well, wow. What a, what a 24 hours it has been. I released my video called Exposing Patrick Bed David's Pyramid Scheme. Whoa, whoa, crazy, crazy. The title, he's crazy. Is it clickbait? Is it clickbait? No, it's not clickbait. And it's going stupid poopoo caca crazy right now, as you can see right there, 43K views in the first day. And I expect that, I anticipate that to go much higher in the following days because I woke up shortly ago, uh, maybe two hours ago, maybe. Okay, I think maybe the, ooh, I think maybe the microphone, the receiver for my Rode lav mic is dead, which is weird because I charged it, but receiver for my Rode, it's always something. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll plug it in so that it's charging while we're doing this, and then by the time it has some juice, I'll switch back over to it. Thanks for bearing with me. What the fuck? What the fuck? That's insane. Professional YouTuber here, guys. Almost 100,000 subscribers. This is the shit we're dealing with, LOL. Let me see if it's actually... Let me see if my... Oh, yeah, it was dead. Maybe I forgot to shut it off. Who fucking knows? Anyways, I woke up not so long ago, and I messed up the camera. We love to see that. Perfect. There we go. Cover this up. Da, da, da. Anyways, I woke up not that long ago and I was scrolling through YouTube comments and I saw a comment that said, Hassan, Hassan Abi is reacting to your PBD video on his stream right now. And so I went to go check and sure enough, Hassan was reacting to my full Patrick with David video. Now I, this just got posted. The VOD of this just got posted. So I, I still don't know how this like came about when I clicked on it. He was already like part way through the video. So I need to go click here and see exactly how this happened because I'm very curious. Oh, here he's talking about Amway. Let's see this. I'm not sure how it works on big streamers channels like this. Like, do they get donations and then make the decision? I still haven't, I still haven't seen uh, the full stream of this. I caught like the last bit of it but i'm very curious so anyways when i clicked on it hassan was reacting to my uh video in front of like more than sixteen thousand people and of course i started getting a mass influx of comments and subscribers from the stream so thank you Hassan. i appreciate that i i don't i don't uh agree with everything i've uh seen from hassan but that's okay we you know as adults we can we can disagree and still still be cool and I, I, I certainly appreciate uh, him agreeing with the topic of this video and, and liking this video. So as you can see here, not making it up, there's Hassan reacting to my video. They're gonna be rich. Patrick Bet David is a genius because he made- So 
when once this happened, of course, you know, equal and opposite reactions to every action. And I posted last night as well, I posted this clip from the video. I guess it would be this morning for you guys watching this. I posted this clip on my channel. I'm gonna play it for you here. It's called How PBD Really Made His Money, okay? Let me just play this for you first, okay? Watch this. David made his millions running a multi-level marketing company. PHP, people helping people, or people helping Patrick. The interviews that you've seen with Kobe Bryant, Jordan Peterson, etc. these are at PHP events, but that's not included in any of the branding. You have to be eagle-eyed and pause the video at the right moment to see in the background some logo that says PHP or somebody in the crowd wearing a shirt that says PHP. He then took that content and released it on his own separate channel that had nothing to do with PHP called Valuetainment or PBD Podcast and built a personal brand off the back of the money that he was generating from the MLM. This is, this is insurance? This is an insurance company, yes. Now it's the insurance company, and now he's reached escape velocity where he has millions of followers who follow him for being a personal brand, which makes people more resistant to the idea that he ever was once running one of these kinds of organizations. Do you see how actually diabolical that is? Patrick ben Yes, yes, Mike was muted again. Thank you guys for, for telling me. Okay, I'm not gonna waste time. Basically, um, that, that clip, that short clip that you just saw there is not providing the full context of the full 25 minute long YouTube video because the short clip is obviously just a short clip. You know, I have to keep it under a minute to post on YouTube Shorts, otherwise it's gonna post as like a long form video. So. People who watch that aren't going to get the full context. And also, the 25-minute video was a stream clip, actually, that was clipped from a live stream I did a few weeks ago, which was almost three hours long, where I talk about, you know, Patrick David and PHP and multi-level marketing. And I cut that down into the 25-minute long video where I added the sound effects and the different edits and flourishes and whatever. And I made, like, this definitive 25-minute long video. I then cut that 25 minute long video down into shorter clips. Of course, the narrower you go in terms of the content, the less context that you will be getting. I still think the 25 minute version is a, a pretty fleshed out definitive version for anyone to watch. You don't need to have seen the stream. Uh, you don't need to have seen the uh, full three hour stream. But look, look how crazy this is. And I've been getting comments like this on the full video too. But look at the cope and the fanboy dick riding just in the comments from that one minute clip that is the longest stretch i heard in my life you literally provided no proof uh, whatsoever of this claim because you know it's 100 percent wrong dude this is a clip this is like a 58 second clip and because i was very you know because i'm using youtube the right way look you can click right here and click the related video and go to the full 25 minute long video and see the full proof that I apparently didn't provide. Look at this, look at this. Wait, wait. Bro, you have gone off the deep end. That makes him smart. In which world is that diabolical? Hater. Man, you super mad, ain't you? Coffeezilla wannabe. Why should I care? Stop it. Sounds like a reason to use his marketing company. I'm sorry for your loss. Bro, the amount of PBD fanboy cope is staggering, bro. And you know what? I should have made this video about PHP and PBD five years ago. But, you know, I was focused on other things, working on other things. But as time has gone on, I mean, you know from if you've been watching my channel for some time, the companies that I've talked most about are the companies that are, of course, MLM companies, 
but the ones that have this very sophisticated disguise of the insurance agency. You, you've seen, I've made countless videos about World Financial Group. I've done this video now about PBD and PHP. I've made videos about another insurance themed MLM company whose name I shan't say. The assassins are watching everyone. The assassins are in the chat, they're in the discord. I have to be very, very careful. But the amount of freaking, pardon my language, cope from these fanboys is so insane. I, I wanna show you another, uh, another comment that I actually, I actually had to give an entire dedicated community post to it on my channel because it was so, like literally so stupid. Okay, here we go, ready? Let me switch over to it. Here's the comment from Nathan Poole McCullough. Why don't you actually interview PBD? Sure, let me just call him, right? This is a very one-dimensional take. I can understand your questioning of the MLM industry, but this video seems like a straw man argument of a guy that is actually doing a lot of good in the world right now. So many things wrong with this. Okay, so it's a one-dimensional take. Well, I'm just one guy. I don't have Patrick's phone number to call him. So if I don't have the other person who I'm talking about with me on camera, then it's one-dimensional, okay. Secondly, you can understand my questioning of the MLM industry that's exactly what I'm doing in this video. That's Patrick's company is an MLM. So you can understand why I'm questioning the MLM industry, but not questioning Patrick's MLM run by Patrick and thus questioning Patrick. And then he says, it's a straw man argument. This is not a straw man argument. I mean, he's, he's applying the name straw man argument incorrectly. A straw man argument is when you deviate or deflect from the topic at hand and bring up some other shit and start a whole new argument. It's like when someone says, uh, this is an example of a straw man argument. Person A says, it's important to eat healthy foods. And then person B, applying the straw man fallacy says, so you hate fat people. That's an example of a straw man fallacy. Where did I do that in my video? Of course, I didn't do that in my video. Um, doing a lot of good in the world right now. What? What is he doing that's good in the world right now? I like, I like Patrick B. David's content. I said at the very first few seconds of the video, I started the video with the disclaimer saying, I like a lot of Patrick's content. You know. I, I think he's uh, he does a very good job of playing to his base. And obviously Trump is like his, you know, he's Trump's number one fan. So, uh, you know, he can learn how to do that from Trump. But like, as time has gone on, I've, I've realized, like, I don't think Patrick B. David actually thinks anything. I think he just is very calculated in saying the thing that he knows is the right thing to say to please his base. So when it comes to the good he's doing in the world, it's like, yeah, is he providing entertaining content? Yeah, but entertainment is not, let's not act like entertaining people on the internet via podcasts where you are just facilitating the platform for the actual interesting people to come on and talk. PBD podcast would not be the PBD podcast if it was just him on there talking every every week. It's It's dependent on the guests. So, okay, sure, he's making entertaining content. I argue that it doesn't come anywhere close to the harm that he has done via running and pushing an MLM that has scammed undoubtedly hundreds of thousands of people over the years. Nobody is perfect, but I feel like people, P-O-P-L, should be judged by their whole body of work and not just one aspect. I agree. I agree with that, which is why I think, which is why I still uh, think that Patrick B. David's net impact on the world is a harmful one. If you weigh the positive impact of doing these podcasts and entertaining videos versus the negative impact of multi-level marketing, a, a, a scheme where more than 99% of annual participants are guaranteed to lose their income as a result of the plan, recruit five people who recruit five people. I mean, you can go look on the, uh, I, I refer to this document all the time, the John Taylor, John Taylor, the case for and against MLM. This is a this is a document that is literally on the FTC's website. Okay, this is the full full study. Okay, this this document, which also has contributions from Robert Fitzpatrick, who I've interviewed on my channel. Okay, this document details that you have a greater chance of success in a no product pyramid scheme 
than you do in an MLM company that has a product, a legitimate MLM company that has a product. You also have a higher chance of success in an illegal Ponzi scheme, just a good old cash-based Bernie Madoff, give me $10,000, I'll give you $20,000 back Ponzi scheme. You have a better chance of making a return on your money and getting out with a net increase than you do in a legitimate product-based MLM. So I'll actually partially agree with folks when they say MLMs aren't pyramid schemes. You're right. MLMs aren't pyramid schemes. They're much, much worse than pyramid schemes. That's a fucking fact and a half. So hold on. There's more comments that I want to show you. I, I mean, where's this one comment? Where's this one comment? I posted another comment on my Instagram story. Somebody said, defending Patrick. Here we go. This is actually stunning and I'm going to open it for you on the screen here rather than reading it from my phone because I didn't post this as a uh, uh, YouTube community post. I just post this as an as an Instagram story. But boy, oh boy, the madness, the madness and the cope. By the way, thumbs up the stream if you're here, y'all, if you want to push the algorithm or whatever, whatever, you know how it goes. Also, I'm sure that uh, there's going to be some fallout from this. So if you want to support the boy, support the channel. Uh, Streamlabs link in the chat. I'm sure all of the uh, uh, MLM fanboys are, are going to be spamming the chat right now being like, look, he's begging for donations. He's scamming his own audience. He's, he's using a multi-level marketing scheme because he makes YouTube videos and then he has to get fans on his channel to give him money. See, he's... And all the other uh, false equivalence fallacy nonsense that, uh, that they can come up with. But... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of you guys watching right now. 370 people, so thumbs up the thing, you know. Get let's get let's get it going. You know, you recruit five people to click like on the stream. Five more people come, they click like. Come on, baby. Here we go. I'm gonna share this story with you. Um, screen share. Here we go. Can y'all see this? Okay, I I posted this and I said, imagine actually being this stupid. This is a comment on my PBD video. Ready? Imagine trying to make a multimillionaire look like shit. I don't care if he ran sweatshops. Can't make this shit up. You cannot make this shit up. I don't care if he ran sweatshops. At the end of the day, he's got more life experiences than any one of you in this in this comments. Instead of learning the right mindset to find opportunities. I actually this is such a stupid comment that I have to, like, part of me actually believes that this is, like, uh, uh, satirical. Like, they cannot be serious. Imagine, imagine that. I don't care if he ran sweatshops, he's had more experiences. Okay. And I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein and Bill Cosby also had more life experience than me. Does that mean now that I should not care about the evil shit that they were doing? Absolutely insane. Uh, even if he did scam, if he did it legit, I'd try it myself to see if there's money in the industry. What? Even if he did scam, semicolon, if he did it legit, what do you mean? If he scammed legit? What? I'd try it myself to see if there's money in the industry. Trial and error and mentors who are doing what you want to be doing. I can't look at a guy in front of a green screen hating and trying to cancel a father and a mentor to many. Find peace within yourself because you seem like you don't got no self-esteem because imagine trying to call someone a scammer when he's roaming free without any charges pending or given to him. Got him. Oh, he got me. Oh, he got me. What you were about he really to bodied me, y'all. The participants are not actors. He really they bodied me. I. You actually cannot make this shit up. You actually cannot make this shit up, dude. Thank you, Sev, for the, for the bag. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. The amount of like black and white thinking that happens today where it's like, I admit myself in the first moments of the video that I like Patrick, but David's content and people just seem to think that I'm like trying to cancel him, which I'm not trying to do. I'm just opening people's eyes to the facts. Patrick, but David routinely tries to cover up his MLM background, and when he's confronted on it directly, like in the case I showed in the video, the clip of CoffeeZilla and Amish confronting Patrick live on Zoom, being like, yo, do you not think you're an MLM? He just goes off onto these long tangents about when I was in the military and I was 19 years old and then I, Morgan Stanley. 
It's, it's it, fucking insane. You know those memes where it's like, when I'm in a blank competition and I see my opponent is blank? This is my version. When I'm in a yapping and babbling and lying competition and my opponent is Patrick Bet David. Literally. There's another comment I want to show you that absolutely broke broke the logical pathways in my brain. It broke the neurons in my brain. Let me show it to you here one second. Um, let me find it. Okay, here we go. Again, cannot make this shit up. Here we go. This is from my YouTube studio. You're seeing it. Curry Pablo says, MLMs, though deceitful a scam they may be, aren't forcing people to join them. People make their own decisions. PBD, though a bit of a grifter, has created a great media conglomerate in the past decade. I don't agree with everyone PBD. I think he means to say everything PBD says or does. I think he does great entertaining interviews where he lets his guests tell their lies or stories. MLM will always be with us, but you have the choice to join them or not. I reply and I say, it's a choice based on lies. Therefore, true consent can't be given and the blame can't fall on the shoulders of the victim. If I give you a glass of water and purposefully leave out the fact that I've added poison to it, should I then blame you for making the choice to drink it after you've realized what happened? You said it yourself, deceitful as they may be. This is the crux of the issue. So this guy, Curry Pablo, says, I mean, look at how he contradicts himself multiple times. MLMs, though deceitful a scam they may be. So he admits MLMs are a deceitful scam. And the, the nature, the very nature of a scam, the word scam, means to deceive someone. And if you're scammed, it means you thought you were going to get A and you didn't get it. Somebody told you the price was going to be $10, and then when the service was complete, they actually told you it's going to be $50. They lied. Or they told you you're going to, if you give them $500, they're going to make sure that they teach you a way to get $10,000. And then when you give them the $500, they actually either don't, don't give you it, or they blame you. Like in the case of MLM, you pay $500 for your sign-up and starter kit and whatever, and then when you fail, inevitably by design of the system, they'll tell you, oh, well, you didn't work hard enough, you didn't follow the system, you didn't believe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So he admits they're a scam and then says, MLMs, though de deceitful a scam, they maybe aren't forcing people to join them. Well, it, it's hard for me to even like address this because it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Of course, you're not forcing people to join them, you're deceiving and scamming people into joining them. So what is your point? Yeah, you're, a, a gun is not being held to their head saying, yeah, sign up to this MLM. But it's the next most coercive thing that you could be doing. Lying to them, telling them, yeah, you're going to make millions of dollars. The, the water, the, the glass of water with the poison in it, this analogy I, I actually think is, is the perfect analogy because MLMs thrive and survive off of omitting necessary information. Disclosure, this is one of the most like key things that MLM companies do, is they don't tell you 99% of people lose money. And if you confront them on that directly, they'll have some slick pre-rehearsed answer that they'll give you about, what well, 99% of people who play basketball never make it to the NBA. A complete false equivalence, of course, because if you need that one explained to you, I'll, I'll indulge you now. 99% of all people who play basketball are not going to make it to the NBA, sure. But are 99% of all people who play basketball striving to be in the NBA? I would argue no. Whereas 100% of people who are presented MLM are being told, yes, you're going to make millions of dollars. Yes, this is the way you're going to achieve financial freedom. Consider, nobody picks up MLM as a hobby like they pick up basketball. Nobody goes and applies for a job at an MLM. MLMs are out here prospecting using social media, posting stories like, hey, who wants to earn $1,000 a week part-time, wink, and then recruiting people like that or going up to people at Target. Hey, I love your shoes. Have you ever thought about making extra income on the side? My mentor has a meeting at his mansion this Saturday. Why don't you? Then he goes on to say, PBD, though a bit of a grifter. So you said it yourself. PBD, though a bit of a grifter. MLMs, though a scam they may be. PBD, though a bit of a grifter. It's like, you're not doing your point, your argument any favors here. 
He's created a great media conglomerate. Okay, and Harvey Weinstein had a great media conglomerate. Amazing historical once-in-a-lifetime films were produced under Miramax and the Weinstein Brothers uh, imprint in Hollywood. Imagine that. This is the equivalent of saying, well, yeah, well, you're just trying to tear down Harvey Weinstein, but he had a great media conglomerate. And... And then he goes on to say, I think he does great entertaining interviews where he lets his guests tell their lies, dot, 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 er, stories. So he has a great media conglomerate, but all of his guests are telling lies. But it's your fault or your choice if you join them. This, dude, there was another great comment. I just have to search the keyword fault because I need to, uh, I need to see if I can find it here. Uh, one second, let me switch back to this. Content, live, no, sorry, videos, PBD, comments. Here we go. Uh, fault, here we go. Actually, I might just have to go, I might just have to go scroll back to the earliest, to the earliest comment to show you this one. I want to see what you guys are saying in the chat. Thumbs up the ting too, by the way, y'all. 400 people watching, only 148 likes. If everybody that was watching right now clicked like, we definitely have a ton more people in here. Also, it looks like there was some bag drop that I have not shouted out. So let me shout that out. Humble Welder, thank you for the dono, says, my PBD. May Patrick but David repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Thank you. Old Red says, if you become an agent for State Farm, do you have to pay a fee like PHP? If you work under another agent shop, do you have to pay them some money? I honestly don't know. Can you explain the difference between business models? So yes, good question. There may be costs associated with becoming an agent, like getting your insurance license, getting your government or state license where you have to pay for the, the course and the, and the fee to take the test and whatever. And there may be, even be some sort of like admin or office fees related to joining a company like State Farm, similar to how you might have to pay broker fees if you're a real estate broker. These are the similarities that people in MLM will cling to when trying to wave off criticism and be like, see, see, we're just like, insert legitimate business model. But there are key differences that make one a scam and the others not. Primarily, in another insurance company, like you use State Farm as the example, you would... Wow, wow, 5-1 Cherry, 20 new members. Thank you so much, 5-1 Cherry, that's huge. Big up for 5-1 Cherry in the chat real quick, y'all, come on. Um, sorry, uh, real quick, shout out to everybody that got a gifted membership. That's amazing. Thank you for that, 5-1 Cherry. Let me not lose my train of thought here. So if, if you join to become uh, an insurance agent at State Farm, first of all, the last thing you would want to do is recruit more of your own competition. Recruit more people just for the sake of recruiting and flood the market and saturate the market with other people because likely... Thank you, Legend Gaming. Likely, if you're actually a genuine salesperson, you want to make sales, which means you need more customers, which means you need less competition, which means you're not gonna be recruiting other people who are gonna be selling the same thing as you in the same region as you. The geography is gonna be important here. Second of all, insurance MLMs and other MLMs are very clever because they'll say you can make money just by selling the product. The way that they gently, but not so subtly, push you towards recruiting as the focus is by making the commission that you would earn from selling so low. Somebody in the comments pointed out that in PHP, I think they start you at a 30% uh, commission. I'd have to go back and check the comp plan. But 30% commission, whereas the industry standard when you get your license and you start selling life insurance, I've heard from various sources who are professionals in the insurance world that the starting commission could be 75% or 90% going up to 100%. So when you're starting people out in an MLM, an insurance MLM, where you're starting them out at 30% commission, this is so very little money. Think about that. If you're selling an insurance policy that's worth $1,000 a year and you sell one and you get that advanced commission and your commission is 30%, that's $300. Think of all the work that went into, first of all, prospecting people, finding customers, talking with them, 
showing them their options, actually closing the deal, them paying, you getting the money, and then crossing your fingers that sometime in the next year they don't cancel the policy and cause a chargeback, meaning you'd have to pay back that $300. But $300, that's not a lot of money. And then also, how many times in a month? are How much do you need a month to live? $3,000? I, th I, I think we would all agree that even then you would be like struggling. $3,000, that means you would have to sell 10 $1,000 policies, $10,000 worth of stuff. You'd have to sell $10,000 worth of business in order to make $3,000. Who do you know that is a financial business sales prodigy genius once in a lifetime savant at sales that they could sell $10,000 worth of life insurance in a single month? and then repeatedly do that month after month after month. It's just simply not viable, especially when you consider, and you can go get insurance online. I haven't had to talk to a human being regarding insurance, whether it's health insurance, car insurance, home insurance, in years now. It just, again, the direct sales model, whether you're selling insurance or selling Herbalife powders or selling Amway cleaning products, it just is a, obsolete business model that simply does not exist, except for in the case of MLMs where they are using it as their disguise and claiming we are direct sales. No, they are not. Okay. Furthermore, furthermore, as to why this is nonsense, if you're only giving your people a 30% starting commission, which is a not enough to make money or feed themselves, if they actually are somehow able to make these difficult high ticket sales, but you're also giving them a commission that is not even close to competitive with the rest of the insurance industry that doesn't use an MLM model. Also, and here's the kicker, the only way you can unlock a higher commission for your sales is by what? Recruiting more people. Where's the sound effect? I don't know. I don't know. Use that one. So in an MLM company like PHP, you're, you're starting at a, at a low commission where you could never hope to actually pay your bills, let alone make the millions of dollars they're gonna tell you you're gonna make. And then the only way to unlock higher commissions is by recruiting more people. And who are you gonna, who are you gonna be your customers? Of course, the new people that you recruit. This is, the, this is how it goes. Sell to the new people who you recruit, then you're not only unlocking a higher commission, but your sales are already accounted for because you're just selling to the new people. Did they really want the insurance? Probably not. Probably what you advertised to them was the opportunity. And how did they, how did they become part of the opportunity? Well, they paid to join, and of course, they have to, or they're pressured to, buy the policy. And even when this isn't mandatorily written in an MLM company's policy, um, where, where they'll say like, oh, it's not mandatory to buy the policy. Well, as we'll see in an email from a former PHP uh, victim here, it's so heavily pressured. You know, MLMs love to use this phrase, become a product of God the product. God did. Madeline I am also S. S. Munsell Law. Law. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, 51 Cherry, aka S. Munsell. Really appreciate you. Madeline Albright was uh, a spokesperson for Herbalife, which is very unfortunate. Thank you, Ignacio. And she says, I am a product of the product. She uses this catchphrase, product, become a product of the product. Well, you know, if you're gonna sell this, it, it only makes sense that you're a customer of it as well, because why are people gonna buy from you if you don't even use it? This is how they get you to continually buy the thing that you are supposed to be selling. But again, this is how they conflate the language. In MLM, to sell means to buy, and to buy means to sell. So to unlock a higher commission, if you want higher than this 30% commission, you have to recruit more people who then also buy the product. And then you tell them, well, the way you're gonna make these sales is by recruiting more people who also buy the product and so on and so on and so on. So this is a long-winded way of answering the question of the person who donated, um, Old Red. I hope, that, I hope that makes it clear. The difference is, are you're not you're not having to recruit nor would you want to recruit in a legitimate insurance agency or any doc I, I use the example in my video law firm doctor's office uh real estate brokerage real legitimate insurance agency these are all things that mlm companies love to try to compare themselves to but these are all false comparisons all false equivalencies s munsell donated 50 dollars and then donated another 50 dollars as five one cherry and gifted 20 memberships Five One Cherry, thank you so much. You're carrying this stream on your shoulders. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sev, 
Uh, join the club of CoffeeZilla light people like Scott Schaefer. Anytime he calls out a scammer, they like, they can't cope. Yep, so true. Any, even when Coffee does this himself, they say he's lost touch. Oh, I'm, I'm used to this, bro. You would not believe how many people I've had. I've had literally people hack my Instagram account and get it taken down temporarily. I've then had to get it back up. And then that same person has come back a year later and been like, hey man, I'm sorry for reporting your Instagram. Like you were right, I was being scammed. That's how brainwashed these people are. Um, okay. I'm not missing any other, other comments. Let me read you this email. I'm not, I'm going to keep the person's uh, information, uh, hidden so that I don't expose them. Here we go. This is, this is also heartbreaking. Okay. I mean, I just can't believe the cope of these people. So what if he scammed? So what if he scammed? So what if he scammed? You can't even make this shit up. Okay. Here we go. I got this email shortly after putting out the video yesterday. I have been waiting for someone to make a legit video about this guy, and I want to give you some information in case he and his minions come after you, which they most likely will. I was with PHP Agency for about a year between 2016 and 17. I had just gotten out. I had just gotten out of the military, didn't have a job, and just overall was feeling depressed from my time in the military, and nothing I was doing was working. I used to watch Patrick Bed David religiously. Then, I used to watch Patrick Bed David religiously then, and I was a fan. I knew he had a financial services company because he has hinted at it in videos, but I did not know it was an MLM. A friend of one of my roommates at the time reached out to me via Facebook Messenger and invited me to their military appreciation event. I couldn't attend it that day, but was able to a few days later for another meeting. She found out I listened to PBD and totally gassed him up. Your video was on point when you said they use, so, they use his social media and YouTube channel to prove he is valid and their company is different from the rest. Anyway, I went to the meeting and was a bit apprehensive that he owned an MLM company after seeing his YouTube channel did not really show that. But regardless, I was signed up partially with the belief that this company will be different. First is they do not tell you everything up front. I did not know you had to get an insurance license before you get any commissions legally. After I, immediately after I signed up, I was asked to give them a list of 20 to 50 names. Slight interjection here. I want to point something out. When these MLM companies that are insurance disguise MLM companies, when they tell you, write down a list of 200 names or whatever, before you even have your insurance license, this should be a huge red flag. This means that these, your upline who's telling you to give them this list of names is going and contacting these people and trying to make sales and trying to sign them up so that by the time you even get your insurance license and it's time for you to make the money, your warm market of contacts has already been tapped. So you're just completely hooped. And the only way now that you can access a warm market of leads is to do what? Recruit more people and access their list of 20 people or 200 people and on and on and on. It is so maniacally evil. Okay, here we go. Thankfully, I didn't really give up many names since I was still skeptical and I did not want to blast my military pals immediately after getting out. I got my insurance license within the week and by the time the first batch of names I gave up went through, I was licensed and able to get paid. I observed other people that gave up every name in their phone, got promoted and barely made any money. But the time, by the time they got their license, they had run through their list and the people that brought them in made all the money, exactly what I just described. There were more than a few things that rubbed me the wrong way. One, the fees are initially unclear. You have to pay to get into the company, then pay to get your insurance license. After that, you pay about $15 a month at the time, not sure how much it is now, to access their app that shows you how much you have made. Then in our office, after three months, you had to contribute about $100 per month to help pay the office rent where the meeting will be held. This amount depends on your level in the company and the higher you are, the more you pay. Mind you, I don't know if every location did this or just the one I was in. Outside of the initial sign-up fee and maybe the insurance license cost, they don't tell you about these other fees and then it's thrown at you a few weeks later. This is another trick. In insurance MLMs I've studied before, they will say that there is no mandatory cost associated with pursuing the business opportunity. However, even though they don't say it's mandatory, usually they have some app where you access your analytics and your back office software. And this app is a practical necessity. There, there is no feasible way that you could operate your business within this insurance MLM if you didn't have access to it. So you need it to operate, but they'll tell you it's not mandatory. 
but you need it to operate. So it's practically mandatory. It's a matter as a matter of practicality, you need it. Thus, you need to buy it. But then they'll turn around and just lie and say, oh, it's not mandatory. It's insane. Let me keep going. Two, they guilt trip you over the twice a year event. I have an entire video on my channel called Why Making Money in an MLM is Impossible. And I detail the various ways that an MLM, even if you're rising through the ranks, even if you are doing the impossible and successfully recruiting more people under you, there are ways that MLM companies make sure that you are in the red, that make sure that you are losing money. And I talk in that video about how events, live events, are one of the ways that they do that. Expensive, multiple times a year, ticketed events that they pressure you to go to, not just for you, but for you to pay for members of your team who can't afford it so that you can show leadership. Really, it's not leadership. This is a guilt tripping tactic that you can use later on down the line where you can say, don't you remember that event that I paid for you to go to? Now you're gonna leave? Now you're gonna let me down? Just when you feel like you need to quit, that's when you need to keep going and on and on and on. Also, uh, he talked about how there's these fees, these monthly fees and the office rent where the higher your rank is, the more you pay. This is another way that they're keeping you paying more so that you finally, you know, imagine you finally go up a rank, you, you think you're going to be in the green and then all of a sudden they tell you, actually, you know, now that you're a higher rank, you got to pay $200 towards the office rent. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. Okay, this is charged up now. So let me switch back to this mic before I uh, continue here. Give me one second, okay? Give me one second. Actually, it might take me like 30 seconds. So grab some water. Bear with me. Switch over to this one. Okay, is that better? How are we sounding now? How are we sounding now? How are we sounding now? Whoa, wrong button. How are we sounding now? Okay. Got the crispy audio back. Let me see, let me see. The why is immediately for you to pay for members of your team who can't afford it. Sounded good before too. Okay. Okay. Got the crispy audio back. Okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, here we go. Um, here we go. Two, they guilt trip you over the twice a year event. A few, weeks, a few weeks after I joined, they started telling us about the big company meeting coming up in Orlando, Florida. It was, almost, it was sold almost to the point of disgust. First, you have to pay for the flight, which for me was from California, and the hotel yourself. The convention is literally all day with a brief break in the afternoon for lunch. Then they have even more meetings, meetings later in the evening, exclusive to a certain rank and above. We were told the number of downlines we were able to rally to the event will determine our success since each downline will be fired up to recruit when we return. Again, these events are all flim flam, nonsense, mindless motivational babble and hype to distract people from the, the fact that they're not making any money and to keep them brainwashed in this cult atmosphere, this group think sheep atmosphere where everyone around them is like, yeah, let's go. Wolf of Wall Street, you know that scene where he's like, I'm not fucking leaving. It's like that. Um, okay. Your, your each downline will be fired up to recruit when we return, which will help propel you in more in rankings and what you could potentially earn. These led people to go rabid about recruiting the few weeks leading up to the event. Mind you, most of these people did not have money. Some stayed at like 10 people to a room at the event, and this was seen as the grind. We also had a quarterly rally meeting where we went to a different location depending on your region. So there's a quarterly meeting, which costs money, and there's a tw twice biannual meeting convention that costs hundreds of dollars. It's 10 people staying in a room. If you watch my multi-level misery episode with the gentleman who used to be in World Financial Group, you'll see him say something similar where there was like four or five people in a single hotel room, people sleeping on the floor. I have shown how in a previous video about a company, I'm not going to say the name, but if you go look on my channel, one of my infiltrating a pyramid scheme videos, I show how people, these young people traveled all the way from like New York to Dallas to go to this company's big convention. And then there was another one in Miami and people are sleeping on like 
pool chairs outside by the pool of an Airbnb because there, were, there, were, there wasn't enough space. This is glorified. This poverty style living is glorified in MLM as the grind. And they'll use that picture of Jeff Bezos where he's sitting there in the first Amazon office, which is just him sitting on the old computer. And they'll use this as like the, the, the image to aspire to. And they'll be like, see, we all started from something. Or, you know, the picture of Scarface. Scarface uh, working at the whatever, the bodega. You know, that, you, know this, you know this shot? You know this shot right here? They love to meme this shot to shit and be like, nothing was overnight. And it's like this picture of Scarface working at the, you know, the little shop, which ironically enough, with Scarface, it literally, his success literally was overnight. He's working at the shop and the same night he tells the one guy, hey, yeah, let me take, let me deliver the Coke for you. And then the next day he's like chilling with, uh, what's, the, what's his name, Frank at his mansion and like he has the money. So it, it, it kind of low-key was overnight. But yeah, this is, this is viewed as the grind. This is complete brainwashing. Five, 10 people in a hotel room, people sleeping on the floor, people sleeping on pool chairs while they're not making money so that they can go to an event surrounded by other people who are not making money so they can get hyped up about making money when nobody's making money except the people at the top of the chain who are speaking on the stage talking about how you're going to make so much money. Let me continue. Three, time spent. They initially sell this as do it at your own time, but this is definitely not true. Sidebar, in the Patrick McDavid video where he's talking to Eric Worre about, are you a big shot? Can I get a hold of you at 11 o'clock at night? These people are fucking complete liars. They'll tell you stuff like, I can work if I don't want to. I have time freedom. You can make a good part-time income from this. And then once, once they actually have your money, they'll tell you, you need to go all in. You need to give everything to this. You need to... Patrick McDavid does it multiple times in the video. I point out his hypocrisy where he says, can I get a hold of you at 11 o'clock at night? But this goes against the doctrine that you can be your own boss and you're an entrepreneur in MLM, which he also says, you're an entrepreneur. It's your business. You can be a business owner. Well, you don't, if you're the business owner, you don't have to do that shit. Even at a regular job, you don't have to be answering the phone at 11 o'clock at night. This is to control your time. This is a cult lifestyle control tactic. The, the bite model, behavior, information, thought, and emotion. B, behavior. What are you doing with your time? Uh, and then also the other, uh, the other contradiction Pat says in his video, this is a 10-year commitment. 10-year commitment? I thought you said it was a good way to make part-time income. And he says it's going to be a ton of work. I thought it was going to be easy. I thought it was going to be a part-time meeting, a part-time commitment. Here we go. They, they, they sell this as do it at your own time, but this is not true. Between the conventions, meeting twice a week, and constantly recruiting, your life, if you want to succeed there, and they tell you this, is to live and breathe PHP every day. We had the twice a year convention, the regional meetings where we went to other towns, a meeting on Tuesday and Saturdays where we trained and, poten and invited potential recruits. Plus, my team had a Sunday evening meeting with the lead, who at the time was Matt Sapala. I've heard multiple times about this Matt Sapala guy. We would all go to the office and join via Zoom with him and his downlines all over the country for some more razzle-dazzle. Four, lack of training. Every training was just recruiting. You've seen this firsthand in my videos about World Financial Group, a company that operates basically exactly the same as PHP. The, these trainings where you go there, these meetings, it's them saying the most basic, rudimentary, fucking surface-level financial advice. Oh, do you know about the rule of 72? Do you know about the power of compound interest? Do you know about the four quadrants of money-making, employee, business owner, entre blah, blah, blah. And then the rest of it is just hype. It's, it's to try to establish that there's some financial authorities when all they really know how to do is recruit. Every training was just recruiting. To be honest, we are dealing with people's money and future here. I was uncomfortable with the lack of training given outside of the basic difference between term and, in, and IUL insurance. Uh, ooh, thank you, X Gonzalez. Um, IUL stands for Indexed Universal Life Insurance. Here we go, continuing. I remember a meeting where I asked a question about annuities. They told me not to worry about that. I told them I was uncomfortable selling this to people, knowing that we sell it. And what if I met someone that asked me that question and I said I didn't know? They said I should bring the person to them if I met someone that asked. 
It rubbed me the wrong way because I believe there should be a certain level of knowledge and competence in selling these products. If you are recruiting a bunch of high school dropouts and people who barely speak English, then there should be a huge focus on teaching people about the products they are selling. So yeah, the training was just focused on recruiting. I've heard this thousands of times from people in my DMs, on YouTube comments, in, in my email, saying the exact same thing. They're recruiting people, they don't know what the fuck it is they're selling, and when they do find out what it is they're selling, they realize that it's rarely actually the best thing for the person, or they've hyped up the product to present it as something that it actually isn't. They're telling people they're going to get life insurance that's going to pay them out hundreds of thousands of dollars, but there's some stipulation in the contract that they signed where it's actually only a $50,000 coverage, etc., etc. Number five, lack of true connections. My time in the company made me look at people like a dollar sign only. I've talked about this too. There's a great video on my channel called Confronting an Amway Recruiter, where I show how superficial and fake these cold approaches are, where they act like they are becoming your friend, where they say, hey, I love those shoes, I love your glasses, oh, that iPad is so cool, in the case of the Amway recruiter. And they make this genuine connection. They'll always tell people, be genuine. If you have to tell someone to be genuine, you're not being fucking genuine. You're telling them, be fake and appear genuine. That's what you're saying. So they'll tell them, be genuine. And they'll go out and make these genuine connections and then get the person's contact info and invite them to a party. And when you go to the party, it's actually a fucking recruiting event. And it just teaches you to become a zombie robot hun bot where you look at everyone as a mark. It's so predatory. Okay, sorry to keep interrupting this guy's email. Thank you again for this email. Um, my time in the company made me look at people like a dollar sign only. I literally couldn't hang out with some people in PHP without it turning into some kind of competition to see how many phone numbers we could get. Every hangout was an opportunity to recruit. We would literally go to dinner and someone would poke at me to go recruit that waitress, etc. It was weird and truly rubbed me the wrong way. Thank you, Sev. Thank you. Number six, big push to sell indexed universal life, mostly because it paid out more than a term insurance. IUL payout was way more than term life. Yes, and uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but insurance industry professionals that I've talked to have said IULs are rarely the right fit for the customer. Number seven, office drama of two downlines. The office was shared by two downlines at the time, and there was some kind of tension between the two. It was super weird. The senior marketing director from the other downline was the main trainer. They claimed to be millionaires and had the blue ring which they wore all the time. Oh yeah, another thing. There is like a frat boy culture regarding their rings. Type in PHP agency rings on Facebook and you will see. Anyway, they had the blue ring, but I noticed the guy literally wore the same gray suit and blue shirt every meeting. Literally, like the whole year I knew them, he wore the same clothing. It might be a uniform thing, but to me it was a broke thing. I agree. Number nine, huge fetish with Latinos. This is something I've talked about before in, in my videos about how minority communities and in the United States, it's specifically uh, Latino people, are targeted to join MLMs. Uh, in the documentary Betting on Zero, which is about Herbalife, you'll see this highlighted. And in the John Oliver video called MLM, it's one of John Oliver's biggest videos, has like 36 million views where he breaks down multi-level marketing. He talks about how Latinos are, are the prime target in the West for multi-level marketing schemes, especially Herbalife. And there's a clip of their CEO, Michael, Michael Johnson, being like, the blood of the Latino community runs through our company. It's such a weird, such a weird... Uh, clip. Number 10, promise of owning equity in the company. Something I've seen other MLMs lie about. When I was in the company, top people at the company said you could own a piece of the company. It was used as a recruiting tactic. I believe you had to get to a certain level before you could even get some equity. Not sure how the equity was determined, but it was sold as owning a piece of Apple before it went IPO. They all say this. And how all those people made millions. Not sure if the equity thing is still going on, but it was one of their tactics. Number eight, lack of fiduciary and potentially illegal behavior. This incident was one that literally caused me to check out. PHP agents can write policies from different insurance companies. Some companies are different from others. For example, AIG was best for young people with no pre-existing conditions because their term life payment from the customer was the lowest. However, they tend to reject policy applications more and more and the payout did not come quickly. Compared to another insurance company called National Life Group, their term policy was more per month, but they paid the agent quicker, like in, like in days. So even though AIG might be better for a customer, the agent would not get paid for over a week longer than NLG would. So my marketing director at the time did an emergency meeting and basically told us to not write any AIG policy for anyone. He said his focus is to get the agents paid quicker. Personally, I don't think that is right. 
I agree. If AIG is better for a customer, then write an AIG policy since the customer will pay less a month for their policy. I guess people desperate for money will say otherwise, but I don't think it's a bad thing to wait an extra week or two to get paid if you are getting the customer the best policy possible. This was the last straw for me, and I checked out after that and left the company. Thank you so much to this guy for this email. This was such a clear and concise breakdown of an insurance MLM company, and I absolutely, I don't even need to know this person to know that everything they have said in this video is true. Not only do I know my shit when it comes to MLM, I would argue that my areas of strongest expertise that I have the most experience in is dissecting and debunking the insurance MLM companies. I think these are the most malicious and evil of all of the MLM uh, configurations because there are the most similarities in an insurance MLM with legitimate industries than there are in others. And in my Patrick but David video, which if you haven't seen it, please go watch it after this. I break down the many layers of disguise. Thank you, Ignacio. I break down the many layers. <laughs> they use Kulo to reel you in. I take responsibility. Thank you, Legend. Uh, thank you, X Gonzalez. Uh, and thank you, Specs. Or congrats, Specs, for being gifted the membership. There is such so many layers of the disguise when it comes to an insurance MLM, more than any other MLM. And uh, it's so evil. That's what it is. It's evil. This is not an accident. Multi-level marketing and its existence and its place in the world today is not an accident. This is a calculated evil. That's all it is. It is not an accident. It is not somebody made a whoopsie-daisy. It is not a one-off uh, lapse in judgment. It is not even comparable to the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme, which ran for 30 years, where it was basically him and his brother doing it and nobody else knew about it, okay? MLM is a actual organization that is represented officially by the Direct Selling Association. I'm gonna do a stream on this very soon about, and I posted an Instagram story about this, about how the Direct Selling Association members, the heads of it, were just in Washington, D.C., rubbing elbows with members of Congress and President Biden's staff, talking about how they can exempt MLM from a new labor code rule that would require these independent you know, business opportunities to classify their distributors as employees, which has a whole bunch of uh, wage and tax filing and benefit implications for the MLMs that if it came into effect, would kill all MLMs overnight. And of course, the MLM industry represented by the DSA is fighting so hard against this. These same people that were at the, the White House, at Washington, D.C., talking to these people, a day before, a, an article came out from Truth in Advertising, which is a nonprofit you know, consumer organization that publishes data about deceptive earnings claims. They published a report, a year-long report, that they, a year-long investigation they published that showed that 98% of the companies that are in the DSA, 98% of the MLMs that are in the DSA, which is the official, you know, self-governed by the Direct Selling Self-Regulatory -Regul Council, these official companies, these legitimate MLMs, 98% of them, virtually all of them, use deceptive earnings claims. The very next day, the leaders of these companies were in Washington, D.C., smiling and shaking hands and eating hors d'oeuvres with President Biden's staff. This is not an accident. This is a calculated evil that has insulated themselves so strongly, so deeply with the highest levels of government, with celebrities who endorse them, A-list celebrities. I have a video on my channel about the celebrities who have promoted Market America, Jamie Foxx, Jennifer Lopez, Alicia Keys, A-list celebrities. Cristiano Ronaldo promoted Herbalife. Madeleine Albright promoted Herbalife. On and on and on and on. It's not an accident, and it's also not a business. Next, next, I want to show you um, this clip. Hold on, actually, it's a, it's a, it's a comment. It's a comment. I want to show you this comment. Um, Bear with me for a second. There's so many comments on this video. I'm, I'm, I'm close to it. Um, LOL, this comment. 
MLM are a scam. There are plenty of pyramid schemes out there. Okay. So far, you've got me hooked in. I'm with you. Respectfully, the fact you made a video about PBD shows you're looking for the biggest fish you can find for your channel. Okay. I would like to see you affect in a positive way a fraction of what PBD and his team has. I actually know for a fact I have impacted hundreds of thousands of people's lives positively um, and saved consumers millions of dollars conservatively that they would have otherwise spent in a pyramid scheme. Good luck growing because you'll need it with such garbage content. Really? This video is doing one of 10. I've gained like hundreds of subscribers from it already and I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers. Half a year ago, I was at 66,000 subscribers. So what are you talking about? People grow from what they were to who they are. No one is perfect. Saying no one is perfect in regards to Patrick B. David running a pyramid scheme that destroyed how many people, countless people's lives, which he still, by the way, is active with, and saying no one is perfect is such a cope cop out. It's crazy. It's a cope out, lol. Um, basically, what I wanted to talk about was that. In Robert Fitzpatrick, uh, Robert Fitzpatrick's anti-MLM declaration, Robert Fitzpatrick is a... Uh... Wow. Wow, Gail. Thank you so much, Gail. Can Thank we get... you, Marco. Can Keep we get going. a big up for Gail in the chat? Wow. Thumbs up for team. Wow. Marco. Marco. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gail. That's amazing. $100 super chat. Wow. Pray hands, pray hands. In, Robert Fitzpatrick is the world's number one expert on MLM, in my opinion. I have an interview with him on my channel called MLMs Want to Steal Your Soul. Amazing interview that go, goes deeply into the, the tactics used by MLM to brainwash. Robert has a, a declaration that he wrote about multi-level marketing that we all need to get on board with so that we can reclaim the language that has been misused and misappropriated by these MLM cults that they use effectively to try and legitimize uh, what it is that they do. They try to change the definitions of words or apply words that are, apply words that imply legitimacy towards them and what they do, which is not legitimate. And one of the things that Robert says in this declaration uh, and in his book, Ponzinomics, is, you, I also have an affiliate link to Ponzinomics in the description if you wanna buy that. Thank you, AV. Um, he says plainly and plainly and clearly, MLM does not meet the qualifications for business. Why is this? Because arguably the most basic tenet of a business is a voluntary contract, a voluntary agreement between two people. You charge me a price for this product or service. I want your product or service, you have a price, I give you money, I receive that in return, both people are happy, both were clear and upfront about what it is that they were getting and receiving. MLM, in every instance, does not meet this qualification. MLMs do not tell you upfront, you have a 99% chance of losing in this. What they do tell you is, if, it, if you don't work hard, of course you're gonna lose money. Some people don't do what they're supposed to do. O-B-A-M-N-A. Obama, thank you. Most people don't do what they're supposed to do. Most people are lazy. Most people go to the go to the gym in January and then they stop going and then they become fat. That's because they didn't work hard. It doesn't mean the gym didn't work hard. It doesn't mean the gym didn't work and all these false equivalences. They don't give you, they omit the necessary information that you would need to make a conscious choice about joining one of these companies. They all will tell you, don't worry about it. Just have faith, believe. Look at this guy's Lambo. Look at his Instagram. Look at his Rolex. You can make money in this. I've seen it. Believe. You'll make millions of dollars. You'll be an entrepreneur. You'll be a business owner. So this is what angers me so much. When people on my videos say, yeah, MLMs are scams, but if people join them, it's their own fault. I got multiple comments like this on my video. I can't, I'm scrolling. I can't find it right now because there's so many, but um, LOL, this new comment that just popped up. Patrick David is the best user of the term, by the way, as a way to shift from answering direct questions. Yep. By the way, we were talking about this the other day. You'll appreciate this. He always, Patrick, Patrick David is the king of tangents. But 
it, it's what frustrates me so much when I see comments from people being like, oh yeah, if someone got scammed into an MLM, they deserve it. They should know better. Like, no, no, they were not given enough information to make the decision. As a matter of fact, the information they did need was purposefully and maliciously omitted from the proposition, from the recruiting proposition. You know, again, it's the water analogy. If you tell me, if I tell you, hey, you want to have a glass of water and I give you a glass of water and then you drink it and you die because you find out there was poison. Can I then go like, is it, is it a good faith statement for me to then go, oh, well, it, it was their choice to drink it. No, it was their choice to drink water. It was not their choice to drink water that also had poison that would kill them. Likewise, in MLM, you can't say it was their choice. Their choice that they agreed to was the promise that someone gave them of making millions of dollars, joining this legitimate opportunity where it's going to be easy, where you're going to make money, where all you have to do is follow the system and it will work. And then they join and they follow the system and it doesn't work. And then they get gaslit and told, oh, well, you just didn't work hard enough. You didn't believe hard enough. People saying debate PBD. I would love to debate PBD. As a matter of fact, uh, I've seen on my Instagram over the, over the last uh, couple of days now, multiple people who work or worked for PBD uh, or work for him currently messaging me. Uh, and it seems that they're trying to negotiate some sort of like removal of my video or further discussion. I know for a fact Patrick but David will never debate me because I would not be as easy on him as CoffeeZilla was. Respect to CoffeeZilla. But... If there's one thing CoffeeZilla's interview with Patrick Bedavid did very effectively, it was showing how much of a weasel Patrick Bedavid was when it came to answering questions directly. He doesn't. He doesn't answer one question directly. He goes on tangents and, oh yeah, when I was in the army and blah, blah, blah. Patrick does not want the smoke because I wouldn't let him run. I wouldn't let him go, oh, let me tell you a story. I'd say, nope, answer the question. And if he gave me some false equivalents, I would tell him, this is a false equivalence. This is a fallacy. But I would love to do it. Yeah, he'd call me a troll for sure. I would absolutely uh, debate Patrick but David. I'd love to go on his show. I'm sure we'd have a great conversation. And, and as a matter of fact, aside from multi-level marketing, me and him, we could talk about many things. We could talk about social issues. We could talk about politics. We could talk about capitalism. I'm sure we'd find a great many things that him and I agree upon. Sure, why not? But I just can't let it slide, you know? I just can't let the MLM shit slide. I just can't. I have been a personal... Uh, I have been personally affected by these MLM scams, specifically the insurance ones, when I was 19 years old, losing my best friend to the brainwashing of World Financial Group and telling him, hey man, I have concerns about this. And him telling me, you're just like everyone else. They told me you would say that. You don't believe in me. And cutting me off because I was a broke mindset hater. Fast forward, look at where we are. Look at where we are. I want to share with you another thing. This is, this is, with respect, I guess I should say with disrespect, to how Patrick but David insulates himself from criticism by aligning himself with people who have massive fan bases like Kobe, Jordan Peterson, Shaq, etc. Everyone who's come on his podcast. He builds these relationships so that he, the tide is on his side when it comes to public criticism. And this, this clip is sort of a meme of cringe of uh i'm just going to share it with you this is a clip of pbd on joe rogan where pbd showers joe rogan mind you joe rogan is the biggest podcaster and the biggest media platform in the world bigger than every news station and pbd has an opportunity to go on his show and to further insulate himself in the world of celebrity and you know public affection and whatever he showers joe rogan with these gifts this was uploaded six months ago i really should have done a video on pbd sooner but then i wouldn't have had this let me share this with you i think it's gonna take a minute so i, I want to give you the gifts i got you bro okay. i want to give you the gifts that i got you here um so for me i got five of them let me see if all five of them are here that's a lot yeah let me see if i got one of them uh did he bring the other one as well one more that's outside, I think. Huh? I don't know which. I don't know which is outside. There's a there's box, one Sam. If you're watching, small. the the it's a small box. Yeah. yeah. If you can bring that one, in, that'd be great. Thumbs up the uh, stream, y'all. Yeah. This is a cringe gift bombing, love bombing video. 
I think Joe caught on his BS. I agree. Okay. So I'm betting myself. I think you're going to love one of them. I hope it goes in your comedy club. Okay. Okay. I think uh, the other ones you're going to be like, whatever, because you could buy it yourself. But then the other two, I think one of them may make it on the wall. It's a competition because you got like 100 pieces sitting around that's not on the wall. Okay. Okay. So we'll see what's going to happen. First of all, so you're a Jimi Hendrix guy, right? I yes. think you're a Jimi Hendrix yes. guy. Perfect. I, I got this. I, I We looked up to see what we can do with Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix did a month long, did a special Jimi Hendrix pen that while you're sitting here writing stuff, I know you're probably not a big guy that you care about having a fancy pen or not, but we got you the special uh, limited edition uh, month long pen with Jimi Hendrix. Oh, I hope you like it. I'm sure okay? I like it. So that's one. Two, I think uh, when I think about personalities that kind of push the envelope a little bit, uh, presidents in the past that were anti. By the way, I got a very interesting comment. Now, I'll, I'll just disclaim I don't know if this is true, but I got a comment on my video last night, and somebody said that there's a video where Patrick talks about having a crush on his friend's sister when he was a kid. And so Patrick knew that his friend liked video games. So he bought like a gaming console and brought it over to his friend's house so that he could distract his friend and go Mac on his sister. I don't know if this is true. If somebody has that video, please link me that video. But if it is true, I think it's a perfect example of what we're seeing here as an adult that Patrick has evolved with. And I, I, my inclination is that, my gut feeling is that that video must exist and that that story is true. Because, I mean, look at how he's showering Joe Rogan with these gifts, you know? I don't think I've ever seen give someone Joe Rogan a, a gift on his podcast before. Thank you, Kirkland, Red. Establishment people that push the envelope. One of the names you think about, you think about a guy named Andrew Jackson. Okay. So, I, I, this took me a minute to find this. But this is a letter written by Andrew Jackson, president, signed at the bottom wow. with COA. And he is known as the first ever anti-establishment president, minus the founding fathers. So I hope you like this. This represents that aspect of you. That's okay. amazing. So that's this part. Now, next one. You've gone down the rabbit hole with John F. Kennedy assassination. What happened? Oh, Kirkland says, if I recruit three of my friends to send you super chats, I get a part of that super chat money, right? Uh, and Dave Vaughn correctly says... Only after the blood oath during a sudden yellow moon. You got to take the blood oath and join the cult. There, yeah. what happened to him, all this other stuff. So let me see what we can find with this. This took us a minute to find as well. This piece, Joe, is the actual... Let me see this here. This is the actual Warren Commission. This is so grandiose and so over the top. It's actually uncomfortable, bro. Like, where the fuck... How is Joe Rogan going to get this thing home, <laughs> first of all? And where is he going to put it? Letter. Okay. Signed by signed by Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Gerald Ford. Okay, the letter to the right is the Warren Commission. Then you have the autograph of Jack Ruby. Then you got the autograph of Lee Harvey Oswald, and you got the autograph of John F. Kennedy. Wow. Okay. So I hope you like this. <laughs> so uncomfortable. So embarrassing. Uh -huh. With the letter C O A, all of it. Okay. And then the <laughs> last one, I'm convinced this is the one. This is the kind of gift you would see Tony Soprano get, right? I think you're gonna like a lot. Okay. This last one took us a minute to find. Okay, I'm gonna put it here if you don't mind. So, oh man, this one would work, bro. I hope you like it. Okay, who's one of your favorite comedians of all time? Uh, Richard Pryor. Who else? Lenny Bruce. Okay, so I called around and I spoke to Lenny Bruce's daughter, Kitty. Okay, I don't know if you know who she is or not. Yeah, so I spoke to her. Yeah. And I said, guys, I want to find something special for Joe that's tied with Lenny Bruce. So you open up a comedy shop. Um, this is with um, the, wow. the, what do you call it, when you're doing a, the, is it a stand? Mic stand. Mic stand. Yeah. Okay. When he would go on the road, he had a mic stand and a mic that he would use. I think this is from 1959. This is the original mic wow. Lenny Bruce used. Yeah, we need the frame. Give it to you. Super likable guy when I'm talking to your guys and I see issues. You got a guy here that. Um... <laughs> How uncomfortable is this, bro? <laughs> uh... So fucking sus, you know? So sus. Um, what's the other thing I want to. Uh... I got to go ch check back on the comments on this stream. I got to go check out uh, Hassan's stream where he reacts to my video. I don't even know. How did that even get sent to him, bro? Very, very cur curious about that. 
very curious. Okay. Um, shout out to whoever plugged that on Hassan's stream. Maybe Hassan secretly subscribes. He commented on the video. Um, I'm sure there's one, one other topic I had written for this stream. Yes, this is it. I saved this till the last bit of the stream because I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. And I want to have a fair opportunity to give a disclaimer, even though someone's probably going to clip this, and tell everyone, thumbs up the stream, of course, because there's only 284 likes, but almost 500 people watching. Math doesn't math. And I got one comment on the PBD video. And it was something like, let me, let me share this with you here. So this comment actually got three likes. So some people actually agree with this. It's on the Patrick David video, and it's from Captain Lumix, and it says, Persians are experts at this. And what he's referring to, of course, is this sort of uh, deceptive and slippery nature, slippery way of doing business. I have said before, and maybe if you were here a couple weeks ago when I did the stream on Patrick David, which eventually was cut down into the video that we're now talking about. I talked about how Patrick David reminds me so much of my dad. Somebody actually dropped a comment on the video and said, Patrick David looks like an older version of me. I think Patrick David not only physically looks like my dad when he was younger, uh, I think Patrick's a, 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 maybe 10 years younger than my dad. Patrick David looks like my dad, his accent, He's sort of like, he speaks good English, but there's a bit of an accent there, is similar to my dad. And the way he conducts himself and the way he um, can slip away from questions and the way he can uh, deflect and the way he can use these fallacies reminds me also of my own father. And I know somebody's going to come and be like, see, you're just hating on Patrick because you have daddy issues and blah, blah, blah. No, that's not it. I also like Patrick for reasons... Uh, related to him reminding me of my dad. But I have to acknowledge, my dad is Lebanese. I'm Lebanese, okay? My, both of my biological parents are Lebanese. And I have to say, from a Western person's perspective, it might seem like a racist statement to say that, you know, like that comment said, oh, Persians are great at this, or Lebanese people are great at this, or whatever. But if you've actually traveled around the world and you've been to less privileged places than North America, you will know that there is a, a, a culture, a mentality of hustle, survival. These, you know, people in the West might not understand this because it's, the, the circumstances are not as dire, okay? But if you have had relatives who maybe they were children when there was war going on around them or teenagers, or maybe their parents lived through war. I'm sure Patrick but David has talked about this sort of immigrant experience and a war with his uh, father and relatives and whatever. I think there is a mentality among, especially among Middle Eastern cultures, and I'm speaking about this as an experience. This is my own lived experience, okay? This is not an outsider perspective looking in. This is my lived experience. I can tell you from firsthand experience that there is validity to this statement that people from a Middle Eastern background they have this sort of, it's beautiful in a way because it's this self-sufficient, you know, not relying on anyone else, getting it out the mud, doing what you got to do to get that bag mentality. In a lot of ways, this can be beautiful, but in a lot of ways, this can be harmful. And I see it. I see this same type of like immigrant hustler, Middle Eastern mentality with Patrick but David that I see in my own father, that I've seen in relatives, that I've seen in people in my own community when I was a teenager working at my dad's Lebanese restaurant. And you see these people and very few of these people that come in there have a boss. All of them are entrepreneurs. All of them are hustlers. They have a shop. You know, they do carpentry. They do uh, a car detailing business. They have a shisha lounge. They have a shawarma restaurant. You know, it's very rare that you'll see these people um, who have this kind of background where they've come from a place where the opportunities were not uh, plenty, not plentiful, and they come to Canada and they make something for themselves, they have this sort of trauma experience where they, they never want to allow their fate to be in someone else's hands again. And unfortunately, sometimes this can uh, manifest itself in harmful ways, like in the example we're looking at here with Patrick David's MLM. Now, the ultimate, you know, 
brick wall argument that I'm sure Patrick McDavid and any of his fanboys could use is, well, I'm not doing anything illegal. And this is true. I'm, I've heard it from people in MLMs before. Well, you know what? Yeah, they may be scamming, but at least they're not selling drugs. At least they're not killing people. I would argue that you would have a much more difficult time harming as many people as an independent narcotics dealer as you would running an MLM. Narcotics dealers are not trying to recruit five people to recruit five people to recruit five people into also becoming drug dealers and flooding the market with their own competition, thus destroying more and more lives. If anything, a drug dealer's uh, entrepreneurial endeavors are limited to the amount of people that they can deal with directly. In MLM, this is not the case. In MLM, you are weaponizing people's network of friends and family, their warm network, as well as mobilizing them to cold prospect strangers who they don't know, and then recruit those strangers and their warm network to give over their list of 200 people who also get recruited into the system where you have a 99% chance of losing money. Never mind the brainwashing element that causes people like my old best friend to say, you're just a hater, you don't believe in me, they told me you would say that, and destroying friendships and relationships and mental anguish and causing suicides and divorces. And I actually think you would have a much harder time impacting the world negatively as a drug dealer than you would as an MLM distributor or organizer. So when they say as this blanket defense, oh, well, what we, we do is legal. Legal does not equal lawful. And if you are relying on something being legal as the reason, you know, as your defense, you should probably take a, a strong look in the mirror and, and evaluate your own moral compass or lack thereof. Oh, well, it's legal. So just because it's legal, that, that's the only reason that you're choosing to not stop doing it? is because it's legal. And I use this analogy all the time, and I think it's very appropriate. Slavery was legal for hundreds of years, and we all can collectively look back and realize that it was wrong and it was fucked up for humans to treat other humans that way. And there are many places in the world where there's open discrimination against certain demographics of people, whether it's based on their religion or their ethnicity or their gender. And I think we all agree it's wrong too, but unfortunately, that's what it is. Law does not always, you know, laws change every day. I, I was only, a, I was a teenager 10 years ago seeing gay marriage become legalized. Up until that point, it was illegal. Back then, only 10 years ago, there were people saying, oh, well, it's illegal for a reason. Now it's not. Marijuana, it was illegal because it's a gateway drug and it's harmful and you're going to become a heroin addict and you're going to start smoking crack and blah, blah, blah. Now it's legal. Be on the right side of history. If you're watching this, I implore you, be on the right side of history. Do not give these people excuses to continue scamming. That is what it is. I put myself at risk every day, embroiling myself in lawsuits multiple times a year because I dare to say the truth. MLMs are scams. MLMs are cults. MLMs are not legitimate businesses. The people who start and run MLMs are psychopaths who have no, who have no regard for the well-being of other people who they victimize. They have no empathy and they are scammers. This is the truth. Just because something's legal doesn't mean it should be. Slavery was legal for hundreds of years. We all agree today that it was wrong. And in the future, I, I very strongly hope that MLM is no longer legal and these people can no longer hide behind it. A legitimate business model where you have a higher chance of losing money and a well-documented, proven, factual history of deception and a business model where you have a higher chance of losing money than an illegal Ponzi scheme or an illegal pyramid scheme that has no product. And still we hear people say, oh, a pyramid scheme has no product and a legitimate MLM has a product. Really? If it's so legitimate, why is there a higher loss rate in legitimate product-based pyramid schemes than in illegal pyramid schemes? Sorry, MLMs. Legitimate MLMs with products than illegal pyramid schemes. The answer is money, lobbying. The government has been lobbied to shit, to let these MLM companies slide 
so that the FTC looks the other way, so that they get a slap on the wrist, they pay a fine, on and on and on. There's a great quote. If the, if the penalty for committing a certain crime is a financial one, if it's a fine, then it's only illegal for poor people. If you have a Bugatti and you go park up in the no parking zone right in front of a hotel and they start putting parking tickets, $50, $50, $50, and you don't give a fuck because you're a billionaire, well then you can do it. It doesn't matter. It's like, it's nothing, you know? But to somebody else, $50 might be a lot. So it's very interesting how that goes, you know? MLMs, as rarely as they get prosecuted, the FTC can't bring criminal charges. Did you know that? The FTC can only present a civil case, meaning it's not criminal, meaning no one will ever do jail time. Meaning these people, these psychopaths who have perpetrated a calculated evil, a calculated fraud, who have knowingly and purposefully lied and lied and lied and gaslit and bullied and manipulated will never go to jail. Usually, they'll never even be banned from, ha from participating in MLM. They're free to go start a new one or join a new one and bring their downline with them. And it's business as usual. And in the rare event that an MLM is prosecuted and they have to pay a fine, Let's say it's $100 million. Whoa, $100 million. That sounds like a lot of money. $500 million. You know, the infamous Herbalife case, that was a $200 million settlement. What is $200 million to a company that's made $2 billion? The $200 million is a one and done. And then it's years of accumulating money from scamming. It's all one big game. It needs to be dismantled. Obviously, I think... Uh, I think that lobbying in, in the West, lobbying period needs to go away. This is not a democracy. You know, we have, you know, in the United States, politicians are allowed to trade stocks and hold stocks. There's a whole, uh, there's a website called Pelosi Tracker where you can track Nancy Pelosi's stock trades and copy her trades. And Nancy Pelosi is one of the greatest stock traders of all time somehow. Hmm. I thought this woman was a politician. Somehow she's one of the best financial geniuses in the world. How could this be? Corruption? No. Insider trading? No. MLM, a proven scam. 98% of the companies in the DSA are using deceptive earnings claims. 99% of people in every MLM company every single year ever will lose more money than they earn. And yet it's a legitimate legal business model that the FTC refuses to uh, name one company that is a legitimate MLM. Hmm. Could it be lobbying? Could it be corruption? Could it be decades? of evil people greasing the right palms and rubbing shoulders with the right people and giving gifts to the powerful, influential people, political contributions and lobbying dollars. Couldn't be that, could it? Couldn't be that. Couldn't be that. I believe this is coming to an end and uh, I'm, I'm proud to be one of the people contributing to that end of multi-level marketing. Um, and hopefully, you know, I, I anticipate one day I wake up and my YouTube channel has just disappeared because there's been some uh, coordinated effort to mass report my channel uh, and it gets deleted in the middle of the night. But you all will remember, you all know, do not let the information control of these cults and the censorship and the revisionist history that they use, do not let them allow you to forget what you've seen, what you've heard, and what you know to be true. You know, if we were all, if we were all publishing our own stories about the friend that tried to prospect us or the time we were in, if we all got past the shame of it for a moment and acknowledged what it really is, it would go a long way in disarming and defunding these companies. That's the biggest key. We, we are waging an information war right now. Why do you think these companies are so keen to silence me and sue me into oblivion. Because for the first time in history, one guy monitoring Zoom calls and making YouTube videos, well-produced YouTube videos in his apartment, can get a million views in a week and become the number one search term on Google and YouTube when you search the name of a certain company who I won't name. And you can only imagine how this might negatively impact their recruiting efforts going forward when anytime somebody hears the name of this company, they search that word in YouTube or Google and my video is the first thing that comes up and it's a polished, well-researched video explaining why it's a scam. You know, don't underestimate the power of your own voice. 
a channel, I've been sued multiple times. I'm a channel with less than 100,000 subscribers to this day. And I've been sued multiple times by companies that are bringing in billions of dollars. Think about that. If you had nothing to hide, why would you, why would you care about little old me? If something is legitimate, it should stand up to scrutiny. Okay? This is 1984. Okay? The, the chocolate rations have been increased from 10 grams to 15 grams. Yay! All hail big brother! What was the reality? The reality was that the chocolate rations were decreased from 20 grams to 15 grams. But they just deleted last week's news entry and changed the, changed the copy to say that it was increased from 10 to 15 rather than being decreased from 20 to 15. Anyways, that's all I have to say. Uh, MLM is fraud. Glenn says, Amway tried to ban the movie Welcome to Life. It did not work and it is now all over YouTube. Yes, and uh, I implore you, go on YouTube. Search Always Marco, Infiltrating a Pyramid Scheme. And watch and find videos and, you know, I can't say too much, but I appreciate you guys. And um, keep supporting this mission, you know. This, this may not even affect you directly at this point, and maybe you just watch this for leisure, like you enjoy watching MLM content, like you enjoy watching cr true crime content. But it will ha if it hasn't come for you yet, it will eventually. And I'm not trying to fear monger. But if you look at the actual recruiting efforts of any MLM, you have to do the math and see like, okay, if there's 300,000 people in this MLM company in one calendar year, and the, recruit and the efforts of those 300,000 people, are there, they are trying to recruit people, they are talking to people, prospecting people, even if they don't get people to join, how many of those people have been able to at least talk to people out in the world? How many people have been at least prospected and approached with it? Think of it, the degrees of separation. 300,000 people in an MLM company, five degrees of separation between any one of them and any other person on the planet. And 300,000 of them are trying to talk to five people a day, 10 people a day, a list of 200 names, etc., etc., etc. Do the math. That's a conservative estimate. Every single person is, is prospected. And that's just for one MLM company. There's hundreds of MLM companies, some multiple with hundreds of thousands of people. So virtually every single person has been or will be prospected to join an MLM company. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's your brother. Maybe it's your sister. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe it's your friend who's going through a rough patch right now and they just lost their job and they're desperate and someone's taking them for a ride. Some charismatic confidence man is telling them, oh yeah, well just come to this meeting. You'll make $100,000 and they have no other option and they're desperate. Maybe it's your future, you know, your little cousin who's in high school right now who afterwards gets swindled who doesn't want to listen to you because you're a hater. Maybe it's your future child. I sure hope not. I sure hope by the time I have children, this thing is dead and gone. Appreciate you guys. Love you so much. If you want to uh, support, you know, uh, obviously I'm scamming all of you and begging for donations and forcing you to, to for, you know, duplicitous, duplicitously and, and coercively forcing you to, to join my Patreon for $1 a month or become a YouTube channel member or hit the Streamlabs link in the chat or follow me on Instagram at AlwaysMarco, which is where I'll be posting. Uh, I post updates most frequently on there, to be honest. So <clears throat> thank you guys. Really appreciate you. And I'll see you again. You're, you're Peace out. <laughs>